Thank you, Claire. And um, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, and to have such a, a splendid audience to launch what I hope will be a really Im important um, uh, annual uh, conference series for our, our uh, community. Uh, what I wanted to do to start this uh, session going was to invite each of our panelists to talk about the way in which uh, the environment in which they operate and something about the, the, you know, the, the, um, the uh, structure of their particular um, place branding um, agency or image management agency. So. And if you start off, Nicholas. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. I would like to have my slide to explain you what is um, my job. So this is more or less my job. What do you have here? <laughs> What you have here, it's, uh, it's a map of the different uh, Swiss nation branders. So according to our studies, you have here uh, the producers of, the, the, of Switzerland, of the brand Switzerland. And as you can see, I mean, it's mainly um, economy and finance. I would say it's maybe 66% uh, enterprises from the, the economy and the finance. Then you have maybe 20% uh, politics, means decision, means, means foreign policies, such as the neutrality uh, lines that we have, and of course 10% uh, Roger Federer. So, <laughs> so um, I, I run the, uh, the uh, public diplomacy unit of the government. We are within the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we are structured really like a uh, communication agency. We have um, an intelligence unit, we have a project management unit, uh, we have communication designers. And our job, I would say, first of all, is to manage that, to make sure that, that there is information between the one producing the image of Switzerland, and uh, we are advising the government in that, it means that we are doing polls, studies, uh, media monitoring in order for the government to know who is producing the image of Switzerland, and we are very important running project. For instance, we, I'm just back from my, Milan, very happy to dismantle the Swiss pavilion in uh, Milan, but this is very important because we are uh, doing projects, means that we are in contact with those companies and it gives us uh, certain legitimacy, uh, legitimacy to do, to do uh, the job. So um, I have a budget of 50 million uh, on average uh, a year, um, and we do have uh, 45 uh, people working for us. I think so far it's going well, because Roger uh, just beat the French guy yesterday in Paris. <laughs> and uh, I would say that it's going well, because each and everybody here agrees on the definition on what the Swiss, uh, Switzerland brand should be. I think we agree on the values. The, Swiss, the, the brand Switzerland is quality, reliability, uh, predictability, solidity, liability again, and I think we all agree on that. And that's why it's working, because it's quite easy to cooperate with, because we have the same target. Switzerland is rich because we're exporting, so this, this brand is very important for Switzerland. Without this brand, we would have been so successful so far. So. This is my Thank job, you. Nick. Thank you. Uh, Annika, how does this play in, uh, for Sweden? Well, I guess, um, and Niklas, we know, um, our picture is very often the same. And we actually have a struggle um, and, and a joint venture how to uh, differentiate between Sweden and Switzerland in many places. Um, <laughs> it's true. No, uh, and for, for me, that would be Volvo, Ikea, Slatan. Uh, and, and values. But I would like to come into this discussion from a slightly different perspective. Um, and I think that, that the work of the Swedish Institute, and Claire mentioned that we have so different, we are so different, all of us working in this area. We have different backgrounds, we have different um, missions, um, different kind of fundings, different <laughs> perspectives when we start. And from our perspective, we. The Swedish Institute was created 70 years ago. In the end of the war, Second World War, in order to actually maybe re-establish um, trust and redevelop, strengthen relations between Sweden and um, the rest of the world. And what we did uh, 70 years ago is basically what we do today. 
we talk very little about branding. We talk about developing, strengthening interest, knowledge, and understanding for Sweden. We talk about strengthening relations, and we talk about strengthening mutual trust. Because what we see um, is, is, of course, a, a, a world so extremely complex, so with so many challenges, uh, and I don't have to mention them, we all know. And we know, for being a small country, uh, we, of course, could not handle, um, find solutions on our own. On the other hand, we know that we do have competences, experience, and values which could be relevant in, in other parts of the world. So our work is very much based on that. Um, and our work together with our, our colleagues, uh, we have a very, very close and good uh, and important collaboration with our colleagues in what we call the Council for Promotion of Sweden Abroad. Um, so so this, is, this is the foundation. And I would like to come back, but I mean, to, to us, uh, we have, I was, um, I don't know how far we should go into it now already in the beginning, but, but to support our work, we actually uh, already in 2005 uh, set a joint strategy, a joint platform for communication. So to, to make Sweden speak, maybe not with one voice, different voices, but based on the same um, perceptions yeah. and, and based on the same very fundamental feelings that this is who we are right. and this is what we can talk about. Right. We didn't have that before and, and right. it has proven to be very, very good for us. And maybe not every country could do that. Probably not. I mean, um, but, but and it was, what was interesting in Sweden at that time was that this was a bottom-up process. Right. We found amongst ourselves, this was the trade and investment, the tourism and the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, we all found that we are some talking in different ways and, and sometimes uh, maybe not really supporting each other. Right. That's interesting. Well, maybe we can come back to that, that uh, whole, whole dynamic. F Philip, you're representing Antwerp. Um, could you talk a little bit about what you do? Well, good morning, uh, Nick, ladies and gentlemen. It's, of course, difficult to come after London and the FIFA <laughs> saying that I'm from Antwerp. Um, so. I'm going to talk about a very small city with only a little more than half a million people. But nevertheless, it has a major international port. It's a diamond center. We have more than 170 nationalities living in that tiny city. Um, and it's been an amazing city. And I've been working as a politician, so there you know, um, for the last 14 years with all kinds of different mayors all having an idea, but the most important thing is that if you want to present your city, you have to stick with the DNA of the city. Because from the moment you try to do something different after elections, it doesn't work anymore. Because people have a kind of DNA, and the only way in presenting my city is by sharing that DNA. And fortunate for me, and fortunate for the city, whatever mayor is in power, after whatever elections, if they feel that, it's also the best result they can have themselves. So to introduce you a little about the city, and instead of calling names and, and all kinds of brands, I'm not representing a country, so it's a little more difficult with, with certain companies, but I brought you a little movie that explains you in three minutes what the city is all about. I suggest we look at that first. Good idea.
So what we want to focus on with this movie, it's not about institutions or places, it's about the people. And the people are the DNA of the city. They have been doing that for 500 years. And today, if we, if we move forward, whether it's economically or socially, or when it comes to culture or when it's international, it's with your people or not at all. Mm -hmm. And you cannot change people after every elections. No. People change politicians, but those who vote do not change. So in that way, you have to stick with a certain baseline, and this is more or less where we, we go for. We are a more atypical or atypical city. Could you talk a little bit about the process by which you generated your brand identity for Antwerp? Because I think you, know, you spent a long time listening to your own people before you started talking to the rest of the world. And I think oh, it was, it was important. It was very diverse. I mean, every department had his own presentation. On a certain moment, I counted that we had about 225 different magazines, brochures, movies, uh, internet website, whatever you could imagine. And then we said, let's stop doing this. Make no sense. We are, we are conquering with each other instead of trying to be united and show what Antwerp is about. Uh, and the quality of life, a place for innovation. Um, we are attracting a lot of people. We're not London, of course not. Uh, but then again, quality of life isn't that expensive where we live. Uh, and it's tracking a lot of people. And with the Eurostar, I'm very happy to host thousands and thousands of students that come every day from, from this great city to come and spend three, four days in Antwerp and then perhaps for the weekend go, go back or whatever. So it's, it's about uniting and, and making sure that your stakeholders all share the same message. And if you ask me, and there's always one word which I use, it's I live in a city with a beautiful cathedral. I always refer to it as cathedral thinking. You know what this cathedral thinking? It's people that on one day in their life, hundreds of years ago, decided that they should invest in building a beautiful building, a cathedral. And the biggest thing of it all, they would never be there when it would be realized. Mm -hmm. If they could do that 400 years ago, why can't we do it today? Why do we always want to see the result the day after tomorrow? So the investments we try to do in uniting people together and in moving forward and moving Antwerp, and that's the title of this, this movie of three minutes, is exactly this kind of cathedral thinking. Annika, could you talk about the listening process, how, how Sweden, Sweden, the uh, Swedish Institute has listened to Sweden and maintained partnerships, where Sweden you know, has its uh, dissonance? First, let me just say that I think this process is so interesting, and I think that what you say about DNA and, and authenticity the first is really one, uh... so important. <clears throat> but, but I will... Um, well, yes, when S Swedish Institute together, and I have to emphasize that we were together with our colleagues in this process, uh, um, the Visit Sweden, the, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, the, the, uh, the Trade Council investment... Council and so on, <coughs> today Business Sweden. Um, to get, we did basically the same kind of process, listening in, listening to, to, to Sweden, but also, of course, listening to the people that we want to talk with. And today, and this was done 10 years ago, in, in our process of finding our, our joint uh, thinking, today we are, are much more working I would say in order to understand who's out there, who is it we want to talk with, who is it we want to reach with, who is it we need to co-create with, co collaborate with. And, and, uh, and that is done uh, very often in, in, through social media, uh, through joint processes where we open up, you could say, a crowdsourcing thinking, a crowd thinking way. We offer a project. And, and get ideas back to us. Right. So this relates to this question here about being open, uh, open rather than imposing a story, allowing others to contribute to the story. Um, but Nicola, how have, you, how have you managed with, because uh, I think one of the great strengths of Présence Suisse has been to listen both to foreign audiences, but initially to the Swiss people to actually find what does Switzerland think it means and then compare that to what do foreigners think Switzerland means and how do you close that gap? So how, how have you maintained that, that listening process? 
Well, I think um, you, you're definitely right. I mean, for us, it's, to, it's very important to know what has, what is, how does Switzerland see themselves uh, abroad and inside, and uh, what is the, uh, there is a gap or not regarding the perception that the people abroad have about Switzerland. I think it's quite close. It's quite close because the cliché that are, in, in a way, the defining Switzerland abroad are very close to the, the, to the national identity. But I think the question was more about the social media, I think. And how come, uh, how come should we, should, should we work, uh, should we uh, listen to the, to the audience to have a communication which is not imposed from the government? I think you have a great Twitter account. I think you're going to talk about that later. The, the, the way we, um, we, we solve the problem of uh, trying to, to tell a story with the input of the people was in creating the, the brand House of Switzerland. We do have House of Switzerland. We do have House of Switzerland during the Olympic Games. We have House of Switzerland during the, uh, the Euro food and the FIFA, so football and Olympic Games. Very interesting for soft power, as you know, because people are in a modest, patriot, positive thinking about nations. And the House of Switzerland is perfect because a house is a house. Without anybody inside the house, we, we are nothing. So it's, it's a brand that, that invites both the Swiss people to communicate about Switzerland and the company. So this is somehow the way we, are. we, we, we found a way to mm -hmm. have a story not imposed, a little bit imposed from the government, but fulfilled with the people. If I, can, if I can come to that, because it's one of the questions as well. Before we could do this movie, we, we've done something else. Um, the city of Antwerp has gone through a tremendous political crisis many years ago, more than 10 years ago. It was a big scandal, and people had lack of politicians. Um, so what we first had to do, which I did with another mayor, uh, many years, I came in, 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 in uh, as a representative after that political crisis. The first thing we had to do is unite the people, because one of the questions is, um, how do you move forward if the DNA, uh, if people constitute the DNA of the city, how do you compete against other similar destinations? Well, first of all, you have to find that DNA. Find you have to DNA. make sure that people accept that this is a kind of DNA. I mean, it's not if I if you walk outside in Antwerp, people will start to see me and say, oh, there's the guy from the DNA. Uh, it's not working like that. So the first thing we had to do is bring people together. And that's why I developed the brand of the A, which I'm wearing, the A of Antwerp. Um, it's very difficult for Brussels to come up with a B. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we looked at it for a long time and we said, okay, this is Antwerp. So we're going to unite the people around and with one symbol, around the symbol of the city. It is the A. It took us five years <clears throat> and now every merchandising, every, they accept the A. On everything which we publish, everything which we do in partnership, there's only one logo not 224 anymore, the A. That's what we did for five, six years. Now we're moving forward and we, 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 we're bringing this communication to what we call brains, tourists, uh, to um, students, academics, to entrepreneurs, to visitors, to businesses. This is the second part. And we've been growing each year 7%, which of course, once again, we're not a mega city, we're a small uh, pocket-sized metropolis, but it's been working. And you, you really take your people, they're, they're your ambassadors. You can say that your people have to be your ambassadors, but ask an ambassador how difficult it sometimes is to be an ambassador. Imagine you have to do it half a million people. Sure. Annika? Can I come back to, to um, the question on, on social media? Uh, maybe there. Um, and, and also, um, the what you just talked about. I mean, um, for us, and, and I think it, for us it's so important not to tell one story. Yes. Mm -hmm. A country is not one story. No. Um, a city is, of course, not one story. And, and the people coming to your country, your city, as uh, tourists, investors, or politicians for partnerships, or business people, I mean, they are also different. Right. So there, there is this multitude. But there has to be a, a, a bottom, there is a source, a, a grain in it, um, which I think is the DNA, uh, basically, that we feel that this is, this is really still who we are, with all our diversity. What we try to do with our um, social media uh, project called the Curators of Sweden, mm -hmm. where we actually let the official Twitter account, the Swedish Twitter account, um, 
we, we, we let ordinary people, ordinary Swedes, use it for one week and tell their story. Mm -hmm. So today, after a couple of years, we, you can imagine the multitude of stories that we have. And could you talk us through, because you know, th this is well known not only as a bold innovation, but also it's been quite a high risk and not without controversy. Could you talk us through how you managed the controversy? I think you have to uh, realize that when you, when you take on a project like that, you have to decide whether is this a PR campaign and we want people to talk exactly about what we want them to talk about. No, you could not. This was about living one of our core values. Right. Why don't you explain? Mean, maybe not everybody no, here is familiar with the... Could you talk through it's, the it's, At Sweden... The project is, is story. we have a Twitter account. We let one person use it in the way they want. The, the only rule for one week. And then the next week, there is another person. Um, the only rules is that you cannot use it for commercial purposes. You cannot use it in a way which would be contradictory to Swedish legislation, i.e. you cannot offend people. And I mean, there are a number of reasons. You could not set anyone else at risk by right. the way you're talking in, 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 in your tweets. So you let people do this. And of course, some weeks we have been, we've had very, very um, hard reactions. We had a person um, joking about Jews. Jews. We had then, of course, uh, the entire um, Jewish, American Jewish community reacting through the Swedish embassy. Okay. We have had people talking about um, immigrants, immigration, in ways that we might not personally agree with. But if you are prepared to have an open account and you are prepared to say this is, this is what we stand for, Sweden is a country of openness, uh, of diversity, you cannot then close down. How do you, so all of us who are managing brands are hostage to things that might happen within the brand. And this has come up right now for... Well, Switzerland has had a number of uh, instances like this where something's happened. In fact, Présence Suisse came into existence because of the reaction against uh, the Nazi, uh, Switzerland looking after the Nazis' gold. And right now you have the situation around Sepp Blatter, which somebody raised on the, on the question board. How, how are you dealing with that and how do you turn that into being part of Switzerland's brand strength? Is there a way you can turn this into a positive? turn the negative into a positive for, for <coughs> Switzerland? Well, basically, I would say if you don't, if you don't have any uh, positive political decisions to, uh, to, uh, to shift the, uh, the, the problems, then you can not do anything. You have to remain, to, to remain silent. And I think that FIFA is a good, uh, the FIFA affair is a good example, I think, to us. And uh, we've been, of course, studying that in the media. I think there is, we are now, I would say, in a kind of new kind a paradigm, because the government uh, remained very distant for mm -hmm. four years, and uh, arguing that uh, it's it's the liberty of commerce or so, uh, important values for Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have this tension between the, the a liberal country and the intervention of the government, and I think uh, uh, after the decision of the U.S. authorities to um, you know to sue the people, then uh, we have been cooperating. Our Ministry of Justice have been very cooperative. The, uh, and at the same time, the Swiss government decided to, uh, to change the penal law. Now we are in a position to, uh, to sue the people that, uh, that have been uh, committed uh, illegal things within uh, international sport organizations. So right now, this is the only way. Right. If you are not backed by that, uh, by a political decision, I mean, it's no way to communicate. <coughs> I think probably more of a problem for the image of Switzerland was the mosque vote, because that was actually about something from the DNA of the people, which was difficult to 
manage, and well, I know that was a challenge. Well, but... to be to be honest, uh, it's the, it's more like the DNA of, of Europe. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, no, absolutely. And uh, I think yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, I think it's interesting, as you know, in Switzerland, maybe we've been voting against mosques, and we had like three mosques in Switzerland. So it was kind of strange, Please? and it was not really good for our image. Three mosques? Yes. I Who have, have? Uh, 87 in my city. Mm. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it was interesting, because I think, I mean, this was the, the revelator of a kind of tendency. Right. And I think uh, the, the only way, the only way to, 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 uh, to try to, to influence that is to explain, to explain, right. I mean, what is the reality of Switzerland, what is the reality of, of Antwerp, and uh, to, to remain, I mean, uh, neutral and explain why the people uh, did that, but and it's, it's probably because of the virtue of Swiss direct democracy that, like, uh, the, the problem would show up in Switzerland in this way first. That it's like having a great right. health service, and you're the first to detect a, a disease. Definitely, it's, definitely. Can I can I give Annika. another example? We are just awaiting, actually, in Sweden, um, an international advertising campaign. Uh, set up by one of the political Swedish political parties aiming, and it's supposed to be, we haven't seen it yet, uh, but it's told that it will run in, in, in Greece, in Germany, in Turkey, and a number of other uh, countries, actually telling refugees not to go to Sweden. Hmm. And so, yes, how do you then talk about your own country uh, and what and the effects of that um, for for Swedish partners, for business, for for society, for we don't know. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wanted to do with this panel was to have you talk about um, your relationships to government and to um, you know two of you have got legislatures. The Swiss legislature has been particularly rough with Présence Suisse in the past. How do you manage these relationships? And how do you manage the change of government? And you, you know, uh, Philippe, you've lived through a number of ma uh, mayors of Antwerp. How, how do you manage the change and keep operating and avoid uh, too much politics coming into this issue of, uh, of the place brand? Well, I mean, you, you're right. But since I started, I, uh, it's going well. Because, because I decided to, uh, to make my agency more important uh, for the government and we've been developing the, um, the intelligence unit. It means that we are doing more and more uh, media monitoring, more and more um, image survey. In all the important sectors for the government, means economy, science, foreign affairs, culture, means that we are now in a position to advise uh, the head of communication, Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economy. So this is, this is something uh, that we, we didn't have before. So uh, with that, we are important, we could advise. So we are no more, uh, we, are, we are necessary to, to the government. This is, this is one way to do it. The other way, I've been pushing and pushing to have more sponsoring, means to have more money coming from the private sector. And if you are able to say to the government, hey guys, you're going to spare because I found uh, private money, then of course you are important to the, go to the government. I would say that those are the two ways I've been uh, trying to, in order to, to secure the position. So far, so good, Nick. So being able to report on your effectiveness, exactly. being able to demonstrate your exactly. value added exactly. uh, is very important. I think one of the things about London and Partners was to be able to say, we've added so many billion uh, pounds to the, the, the economy of London, is, that's hard to argue with. Um, what about but, the Swedish but, Institute? That is true, and, and, and I think we all now work in so many different ways to, to, to measure and to, to, to show the, the effects and, and, and impact. At the same time, I think it's very, very important to have a dialogue with, with uh, politicians that this, this is long term. Mm. Mm. And it, cannot, it has to be consistent. I mean, it changes because the world is changing, but it has to be long-term. Um, and, and the governments could not, uh, there are new strategies every third year, um, but basically they're aiming at the same things, to make your country, your city more attractive. Attractive as, as a destination for, for investments, for talent for tourism, attractive as a partner in business, but also attractive as a reliable partner 
in, in political discussions. So it has to do, and, and, and it is about trust. So still. we're coming back to trust, relevance, yep. these kinds of questions, uh, evaluation, these kinds of questions that, or, and words that come up whenever we're talking about this. Philip, don't be afraid. That's the most important message. Even if the world is changing, don't be afraid of whatever happens. I mean, when I hear about Switzerland and having three mosques in, in, in the country or whatever, um, as I said, in, in my city, we have a very strong Jewish Orthodox community for 600 and 700 of years. We have a strong Muslim community. They are not different, they are part of that DNA. And I would like to answer some of the questions because that's why we are here. But if, if, if people say, or somebody says, the DNA metaphor is problematic because 99.5% were all the same, if that is the case, then we should be very happy here because then this would be a perfect world. Because every human being wants to be equal, wants to enjoy quality of life, etc., etc. The reality is, however, a different, is more different. So it's, of course, there are differences, but it's what to find. And if I speak about the DNA of the city, it's this baroque joie de vivre, which you find in the movie. It's in the way we, we dance. It's what we like about quality of life. It's if I go and see the port, the port of Antwerp generates the income of the total budget of education of the whole country. Just to give you an idea how a small city with only half a million people can be a giant player just mm -hmm. having a world port. So it's not, it's not a question, it's not about that I want to downsize everything to one single concept of logo. That's not the issue. All of them are different. I do not want to bring one global character for the city. However, if something is done with or through or in partnership of the city, then we use one logo. And that's what I wanted to say. So it is a little more complex. And for me, the most important baseline that I've always used is be yourself and not an imitation. If you think you can change yourself in a short term, at the end it doesn't work. Let me give one other example of, in my opinion, an amazing city. It is a city located in the heart of Europe. It's a city with a tremendous history. It's a city that's been destroyed in the last 100 years at least two times. It's not a financial capital. It doesn't have any port, but it's a major player when it comes to um, innovation, recreation, culture, and the best thing of it all, it's deciding what's happening in Europe. That city is called Berlin. And I think Berlin is an amazing example not to have a port, not to have this, not to have that. And everything what we do in Europe is decided in Berlin, not in Frankfurt. Challenging B, huh? Yeah. Berlin. Yeah, well, <laughs> they don't use the B, but, but anyway. So, so, you know, when Gordon was introduced, it was revealed that if he wasn't promoting London, he'd quite like to do Havana. I think you're indicating that you have an affinity for Berlin, but what about for Annika, where this and to round off, if you weren't doing Sweden, can you imagine uh, which brand would you like to be involved with? I think no, because I think all brands have something very special and and, and probably very very exciting. But for you, it's only Sweden. So, no, no, no. For me, it's more a way how to work with what you yes, have. Right. And, and so I would be delighted in, in that process just to see what, what and how could we do it. Then, of course, I, I'm very impressed by what other cities, countries are doing. Um, specifically, I think Netherlands are doing a great job in, in attracting talent. Right. I think Copenhagen is doing yes. a great job in, in, in attracting. Yeah. In, so, so there are many good examples. And, and, um, but basically, it is about how can we much more collaborate and how can we much more get together. And Nicola, if, if not Switzerland? <laughs> if not Switzerland. <laughs> but I, I would say the challenge for us is to push a bit the, uh, our, uh, I mean, the Americans have really done very well the, uh, the, the, the technology, the, the, the tech dimension. Yeah. I mean, Switzerland is Switzerland because we have science, we have technology, and nobody knows about it. So, I mean, if, if I could push a bit more Switzerland, uh, the image of Switzerland into that direction, uh, high tech. Sweden. Into Sweden, you're right. <laughs> this would be, for me, quite interesting. 
Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for uh, you know, your, your contributions, for taking part in this discussion. Thank you to the audience for throwing up such interesting questions. We've tried to integrate them into the discussion, and I think it's a wonderful panel to start the, the, the uh, discussion part of the day. But thank you very much. Thank you, well, Nick. Thank you.